Hey guys, Christy Arnett here with Havad Khan. How's it going, Havad? It's great, I can't complain. Well, it's been a while since I've seen you. What have you been up to? Uh, a bit of soul searching. You know, after uh, the World Series that ended, I cashed in the main event and I played Bellasio Cup and I cashed in that too. And I went by, back to Korea where I spent the previous month uh, after the five star and I vacationed out there for another three months. I played both APPTs, Seoul and Macau. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a lot of like, uh, you know, rekindling lost social ability because I just spent all my time playing poker. And, you know, it's been, it's been very life changing. It's been gradual, but I've been very patient. And uh, you, you really find yourself out there when you travel a lot and experience mm -hmm. with uh, different cultures and whatnot. Awesome. Does that help your game too? Kind of give you a balance so that at the poker table you feel like, hey, it's just, it's just part of what I do. It's yeah, no big deal. Absolutely. When you travel and you expand your mind, you allow yourself to always, uh, you know, make room to understand that you may have made a mistake. It's very hard for a man who, you know, puts his pride and his money on the table to admit that he was wrong in hand when he feels that like he's the best player. Right. And he always has the, the small doubt in his head that he was wrong, but it's like, no, there's no way he could have had something. So. You start to believe uh, nothing really matters. You know, it's it's just about like uh, you want to play the game to its full ability. And um, when you play too much poker, I really feel that a problem is that when your life isn't balanced, that you think too much about the money, even though you think you aren't thinking about the money. Right. Because now that you're putting in so much time, your life revolves around the game to the point where all the results have to be positive, mm -hmm. and that's just a domino effect for disaster. So you suggest giving it a rest for a little while if if you start to feel like I mean, for a lot of online players, it's it's kind of difficult to get away from that and I know you know you spent a, a few years just playing online for a while so you feel like you've got you've got your balance together absolutely and awesome. um, I, I feel like I, yeah. I see a new and relaxed Havad Khan too <laughs> yeah, you do you're looking at me right now new and relaxed and nothing matters <laughs> awesome well I figured for strategy the best thing to talk to you about the king of multi-tabling <laughs> is is how can a player learn to play more player or more tables online Let's start from like one to two or two or three. How did you get started? Well, you know, the first thing is that you have to know how fast you can click and whatnot. You have to know your attention span. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're putting up a lot of tables, it's a very gradual thing. You don't just put up 12 because you see other people doing 12. Right. You don't put up 40 because you've seen me do 40. <laughs> you want to have more monitors if you're able to play six to eight of them consistently. When you have like two monitors, you want to make sure there's no overlap. Mm -hmm. And when you play, you got to be able to make sure you're able to at least have some kind of read on your opponents while you're doing it. I although being known for playing 40 tables, never really always had the best reads, but I was confident that if I could maximize the amount of volume I played, I could make up for it because the players are bad and I could generate a higher profit hourly. Mm -hmm. I never really managed to make too much money at the higher levels. In fact, I went broke a couple times doing it when I tried to get Supernova Elite, which Elki on Team Poker Stars, who just won the Bellagio Festa Lago, managed to do before me. Wow. Yeah. So, okay, so when screens are popping up, tell me what you think about when you have to make that decision in like just a couple seconds. You look at the table and then uh, if it feels fishy that somebody's tight or not and you have a good hand, then you fold if you think they're tight and you know, like if he's not so good and the stacks get very meager and sit and go so it's pretty much push or fold. Say the blinds are 100, 200, you have like ace jack or something, the guy like raises small and like you know this like all right, this is raise small, like these thoughts enter your head, it's like really fast, it's like raise small, uh, this guy is not good all in. Like, split second like that, it just like right. instinct like molds into some kind of like, you know, very pure form in your head and you know what to do right away. And you have to make sure you do it right away because if you time out, the table's gone. You're never right. gonna find that table, it is gone. <laughs> List of like 30 in your toolbar in your laptop. <laughs> I never timed out once when PokerStars uh, banned me for being a, a sit and go robot using a bot. And um, I never timed out once. They said virtually never timed out once. And I'm like, oh, I guess it's right. I mean, cause I know if I timed out, I'd be going on severe tilt. Yeah. $16 down the drain. You don't want right, that to Right, I know. Yeah. Have you ever misclicked playing so many tables? Sure, I've misclicked a couple times. I'll yeah. admit it. I mean, maybe more than I can actually remember, but I mean, everything that you kind of do in this poker game, just if you're consistent and you're hardworking, there's a lot of little things that you forget that actually accidentally, if not coincidentally, propelled you to where you are in this moment. In a big tournament like this at Caesars, playing for a million dollars. Okay, so when you're looking to increase tables, what I mean, for you, how did you know when you wanted to add more? Like, are you looking at right. your hourly rate? No, when I was playing a lot of tables, I was as clueless as somebody who had a good run and had a decent idea of how to play the game. Right. Um, I started out with eight and I'm like, hey, let's try 12. 16, 20, 25, <laughs> 30, 32. That's so crazy. And then how did you uh, track your process? Or your progress. I don't use programs or anything like that. I just check the bankroll and hope it's up at the end of the day. Yeah. When I wanted to get Supernova Lee, I was playing like 250 sit and goes a day every day. Wow. And partly the reason why I upswang really quick and then I downswang right after. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, do you think that um, there's a certain personality or type of player that is better at multi-tabling and some people who maybe just won't, will never be able to do it? It's not a personality. Multi-tabling is a choice. Mm -hmm. You can choose to do it and then after you succeed or fail, you can judge whether or not it's good for you. Right. If you're impatient and you want to make a lot of money, but you know, it seems to be that a lot of people that don't truly have uh, the passion or kind of a little bit stubborn, multi-table more. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say it's a bad thing to multi-table, but they just get into a habit, a trend of seeing all their other friends who are winners playing multi-tables and they try it out because their short run success playing less tables even though they're playing better was bad because they got gotten lucky in a short period of time. So they get into bad trends. Trends are very common in any form of competition. Oh, yeah. Do you think that multi-tabling helps people not go on tilt or do you think that it's more detrimental because if you tilt, you have all these tournaments you can go out of? Or like maybe since if you go out of one, you get bad beated, you have all these other tournaments, so it's okay. Which one is it for you? Both. And I'll tell you why, because a lot of people who get into multi-tabling either do it for a long time mm -hmm. or they don't do it for a long time at all because they have a bad experience doing it. Gotcha. So they'll hit a bad run and they'll lose a boatload of money or they'll do it and then they'll, they'll do well, they'll do bad, they'll do well. And if uh, the games are getting drier over a course of a week and they hit a big a dry spell, they just decide that it's not for them anymore and they take time off and then they come back. Much like I said, it's very important to, if you have the resources and the and funds, I recommend to anybody to travel, travel to an area with friends of yours, people who you know where it's English speaking, and if it's not English speaking, you have friends that can help translate for you. It's very good to have you know, a, a mix of cultures, you know, especially this day and age with like the internet and uh, overall everything being a lot more accessible. You can learn a lot more about life and actually make your poker game better. I know John Jawanda, for a fact, says that to be a good poker player, you have to have a, a good life, a good wife, and a balanced life, and something like that. And I mean, look at his success. I mean, I think uh, I heard him win a very big pot like the other day for like $700,000. So, I mean, you're doing well, he's doing well, and I really want to take your advice and go traveling. And maybe that'll help my game too. Yeah, it will. <laughs> Thanks so much, Vod. Chris Janet with a VODCon for CardPlayer TV.